Have you, your family, someone you know, had an interaction with the medical community that didn't go so well based off the color of their skin? Probably. It's an unfortunate truth. And it's certainly something that happened in the past. What I wanna talk about during Black History Month is medical apartheid. This book talks about the full history of Black America's shocking mistreatment as experimental subjects, which a lot of us have heard those things, but at the hands of the medical establishment. This is something that really rings true to me for a couple of different reasons. One, I'm African American. Two, I'm part of this medical establishment. Now, the story that's really sparking this for me and that has always stuck in my mind is when I was a medical student doing a rotation. I had this lady, she's probably about her early 50s or so, African American woman, and uh, she basically told me she didn't trust me. And I, I couldn't really understand that. I was like, why? why am I giving you bad information? What's going on? And she said, I know what happened to my parents. So she was just a generation removed, had clear examples of mistreatment that her parents had had that still stuck with her today. And even though I am African American, she didn't trust me because I'm part of the system. And that really struck, you know, struck a chord with me, still does, that no one was trusting me. Not no one, but this woman wasn't trusting me based off of experiences that she didn't even necessarily experience herself. That's why this stuff is important. My name is Dr. Sarah Morong. I go by Serendipity MD. I'm a family medicine uh, physician in Tucson, Arizona. And like I said, I'm gonna be going over this book, Medical Apartheid, okay? So I'm gonna put some longer segments here on uh, YouTube. Please, if, if this were even remotely interests you or there's somebody you wanna show this to, uh, please subscribe um, and, and follow along, share this with somebody, okay? I'll also put some just shorter segments, you know, a little bit more entertaining videos, quick ones uh, on TikTok and Instagram uh, by the same name, uh, serendipity.md, okay? But just going through some stuff on this book, uh, medical apartheid, first of all, apartheid, we all kind of know that was something in South Africa, right? Um, kind of their form of slavery. Well, there's a simple part of this saying apart, okay? Apartheid, it comes from, I believe, an Africana word to mean uh, apart or apartness. Pretty simple, right? But this is talking about that in terms of uh, uh, the medical community and how slaves were seen as you know, inferior, and so it was okay to experiment on them. It was okay to not give pain medication and other things because they didn't feel things the same way. It was okay to use different treatments because it was, you know, their bodies handled it differently, which of course we know is not true. So there's many, many is not even the right word, um, <clears throat> but so many people that have suffered at the hands of these medical experiments that we, you know, unfortunately benefit from today. And these were done, and this is the part that hit, hurts me more, these were done by doctors. You know, uh, Hippocratic Oath, first thing is do no harm. Well, lots of harm was done to a lot of people. So I'm, I'm literally just gonna read a couple quick parts from this book, and we're just gonna start in chapter one, and we're gonna move our way through, okay? Um, part one, chapter one is called Southern Discomfort, and talks about exploitation on the plantation, and the role of the physician in terms of even, you know, picking slaves, you know, to add to your collection, so to speak. This is from Frederick Gardner, uh, a Mormon physician who uh, had witnessed uh, basically the slave trade and commented on how the slave owner came along with another physician uh, for that person to examine the slave and decide if they were well enough to buy. And of course it was very degrading. They examined this young girl um, completely naked. You know, they'd stripped her down, examined her body parts, deciding if she was fit. The disturbing part about this is how the slave owner was listening to the vice of the doctor. You know, and doctors are supposed to be teachers and healers. And the, the role that they played in this, uh, just from the very beginning, is pretty disturbing. Uh, here's another part. This is from uh, historian Richard Shariok, who observed in 1936 that of all critics, the Southern physician was perhaps in the best position to report on the physical um, and moral treatment of the slaves. Uh, it went on to say that, as a matter of fact, he, uh, the physician, usually approved of the institution. The medical community's support of this even went into uh, medical schools. And so uh, it said that uh, during, on the eve of the Civil War, Southern students of Northern medical schools were holding rallies in which they voted to return, the South, return to the South in mass. 
In Philadelphia alone, 200 Southern medical students withdrew from Jefferson College and another 100 withdrew from the University of Pennsylvania during one single academic year from 19, excuse me, 1859 to 1860. And so you could see that the slave trade and uh, the medical community's role in it were sort of tied in to the fact that people from the South who'd been to the North left and they wanted to support it and make sure that slavery was still ongoing and were against what the North wanted to do. Some other things by physicians back at that time leading to how it was seen as okay to mistreat them. This is from a Swedish naturalist, Carl von Linn, uh, the most famous of taxonomists who categorized Africans uh, and then by extension U.S. blacks as homo afer theorizing that the black man had different evolutionary forebears and had evolved along a separate evolutionary track from white men. So this just basically says they're different. They're not really the same as humans, therefore we can treat them differently. Now, besides what I've mentioned on how um, that the Southern doctor was a part of the slave system, that really it was slavery that also supported the doctor as well too and their career, et cetera. So, um, Southern physicians supported the slave system with racial medical theories and diagnosis, but the slave system also supported them. In an era when physicians enjoyed considerable fewer financial rewards and lower professional status than they do today, these physicians derived most of their income from caring for slaves, period. As Samuel Cartwright observed in 1853, the most profitable, uh, most profitable kind of practice is that among Negroes. Further along the lines of that Swedish naturalist, basically coining them as a different type of species, the Homo afer, um, there was a um, report here by a physician, Josiah Knott, not theorized that the distinctive knee joint and, quote, long heel of the black man proved that he had been created as a submissive knee bender, a servant to whites. So there's a whole lot more in this first chapter. Um, I really encourage you to get this book and read it yourself. Um, I'm, I'm leaving out a lot of parts. I'm just hitting a couple highlights that just basically you know, spoke to me as I was reading through it. Uh, and I'm gonna end this, end this little segment with just this one last part. Um, it said, historical documents reveal that African-Americans recognized this hazardous medical agenda and resisted when they could. Thus, medical abuse fed iatrophobia, that's fear of doctors, um, the fear and loathing many black Americans harbor to this day toward the American medical establishment. So as I said, there I was, medical student, Seattle, Washington around 2005, 2006, and uh, I was not trusted, even though I was African American, I was not trusted because I'm a part of this medical establishment. Thanks for listening. Please follow for more, share this. Like I said, I'm going to put some shorter segments on my TikTok and uh, Instagram, and uh, we'll be going over chapter two next. Thanks.